Hello, my friend. Welcome to Speak With Power podcast. I'm Natasha Bazilevich, a business trainer, speaker, and public speaking coach. I teach entrepreneurs and executives all over the world to build confidence, craft their clear message, and deliver it with power. Would you love to master your presentation skills, learn how to speak with persuasion, and get inspiration from powerful speakers all around the globe? Then stay tuned. And don't forget to subscribe. Welcome to Speak With Power, my dear friends. And today I have someone fascinating and incredible for you. We have Nancy Picard at Speak With Power. She's Master Integrative Life Coach and author of the international best-selling book, Bigger, Better, Braver. Conquer your fears, embrace your courage, and transform your life. I'm already excited to speak about all of this. <laughs> Welcome, Nancy. Thank you. <laughs> Yes, and I'm sure you guys are excited. I mean, conquering fears, transforming your life, <laughs> that's something that all of us need to do. But Nancy, could you tell us first, how did you get into coaching? Because I know that you have so many coach certifications, mm -hmm. not just life coaching, but empowered parent coach, courage coach, uh, healing your heart coach, leadership coach so much. Like, how did you get into it? Okay, well, so those are two different questions. But the second, <laughs> the answer to the second part is that I have a growth mindset. Mm -hmm. So I, I don't think I'm ever going to stop getting new certifications, it sort of gives you more tools, you know, more arrows in your quiver to work with different people. And so I'm always interested, like I'm right now, I just finished one on called worthy. And it's all about financial worth and net worth and how they are interconnected so strongly. But I'm always looking like, okay, so what else could I do? What else could I use? So, okay, so that's that. How did I get into it? Um, well, I owned a personal training gym. So health and wellness and helping others has always been a part of my life for a very long time. And near the end of my gym days, um, I started to do some wellness coaching. And then I got divorced and my entire life imploded. And then I stopped doing anything. And I didn't, I, I, I don't think I worked for nine years. I wasn't, I wasn't like sad and depressed and not working for nine years. I just had started to move to Colorado and I was very busy playing. And I just wasn't, I, I think I was thought I was done working. And what happened is after many years of playing, I realized that I was not utilizing the gifts that I had and I wasn't living as big as I could. Mm -hmm. And by big, I mean stepping outside my comfort zone, trying new things, spreading my wings. And I wasn't doing that. I was trying to recreate, oh, I should be married again and I should be back in that picture. Yeah. And that's where all my energy went. And then finally, one day, I just, I realized that there, I really, there's more to life than this. And I need to be doing mm -hmm. more things and mm -hmm. giving back and, sharing my knowledge and my growth and my worth. And then I actually got a healing your heart coach somewhere along the way. And then I decided, Oh, that's what I want to do. I want to help others. I want to become a healing your heart coach. Mm -hmm. And that's what started the whole process. Yeah, that is amazing. And when you're saying this, I'm thinking about so many people and me myself too, <laughs> so many people who need to get out of that state of mind that we can't get bigger it's just mm -hmm. this thinking playing small and maybe afraid to hurt someone's someone else's feelings when we get bigger when we actually start soaring mm -hmm. and then spread our wings and so many people need to hear this and you wrote a book also bigger braver bigger, bigger better, better braver. braver yes about conquering fears and embracing yeah. courage what inspired you to write the book well, it's really funny because a lot of coaches write books and it's helpful for us as coaches to have books out there sort of is a brand builder, but I never wanted to do that. I was just like, oh, I don't want to write a book. It's not in me. And then when I turned 60, um, I just thought, oh, it's such an ugly number. And I had to prove <laughs> to myself that it was just a number and being an athlete, I decided to go climb Kilimanjaro. So wow. By the time I actually did it and trained and went, I was 61 and I went, I rocked it. I loved it. And I thought I was going to write a book about just being an, an older woman 
climbing Kilimanjaro because there, I think I saw one other book by a woman about doing it. And so I, I was like making notes and keeping everything on my training because I was a trainer and I really did rock it. I really could have written that book, mm -hmm. but somewhere along the line, another coach said, oh no, no, that's not the book to write. You need to write a book about what's your Kilimanjaro so that other people get to see what could they be doing that would get them outside their comfort zone? How do they stretch and what do they do to get outside their comfort zone and their fears mm -hmm. and take that big leap? But oh, we decided that if I wrote a book called What's Your Kilimanjaro, nobody would read it. You know, who would read it except for somebody who actually wanted to go climb Kilimanjaro? Mm -hmm. So somehow over time, Bigger, Better, Braver is what resonated and Mm -hmm. That was actually a download from the universe because I couldn't come up with it. And at two o'clock in the morning, I woke up one day and said, that's it. And nice. that was it. So cool that you are, you're an athlete and you are, you climbed, you look nothing like 60. I mean, the, the number when you mm, said that, you. I, I just like, no, I couldn't believe 60, that. 66 actually at this what? very moment. No yeah. way. I know. I say I the same thing. <laughs> Yes, um, I was sure oh. you're like like late 40s, probably, or Thank maybe you. early 50s. But yes, that's for sure. And, and this kind of attitude, I mean, of course, sport, I know myself, I'm a marathoner. So that mm, helps me. me. Yeah, but you too. Yay. Well, I used to be this, this, this body doesn't run anymore. That's the sad thing about getting older is that some mm. sports just don't, mm. your body's not happy doing anymore. Okay, so you got to choose then. But I know sport and attitude, this kind mm -hmm. of attitude that you have, I have the same, I would say, or similar, it really helps to stay young. Mm -hmm. And of course, to look at the, the world at our life differently. And it doesn't matter how old we are then, because of, of this kind of worldview and outlook at life. So what would you recommend to people who are still living in the mindset of limiting and we all have limiting beliefs we keep fighting with them i don't know maybe you've already fought all of them and no you no no, <laughs> no. Not yet. because they're not a one and done yeah that's even what when I you think. uncover them it's like an onion mm -hmm. and you're peeling away at them but they're really deep and ingrained and so they keep trying to surface um, yeah and you keep having to say oh yeah that's that belief again I don't believe that belief anymore. So just because you hear it doesn't mean it's true. Mm -hmm. And as you get better at it, you can quiet and just say, well, we're moving forward anyway. So yes. yeah, I just get out, get out of my brain. It's not, mm -hmm. there's no place for you anymore there. Yes. So, but what would you say to people? What would you recommend to people who are in the state when they know they should think bigger, act bigger, mm -hmm. be bigger, uh, braver, better, yeah. but maybe something is stopping them. What mm -hmm. would you recommend? Well, the first thing is, is that if you actually recognize that you need to do more, even that's a, a step ahead of a lot of people. Mm -hmm. A lot of people are just going along on autopilot and they think their life is fine or they're not willing to take off the blinders and actually look at their life or their emotional, you know, joy and happiness mm -hmm. and growth they don't even look at that so that when you at least notice it already you're ahead of the game mm -hmm. so that's number yeah. one number two is what are those limiting beliefs now you know one of the reasons why i wrote that book is that people it's not easy for people to, to do that work on their own and not everybody can afford a coach mm -hmm. So the beauty of my book is that, you know, for like under $20, you can do all the exercises and uncover those. But so the first thing is to just like, see what you're feeling, try to open yourself up to those feelings. Mm -hmm. And what is the negative voice saying to you? This isn't my time. I'm too old. Um, I'm not smart enough. I'm not good with money. I, my voice doesn't matter. My needs don't matter. Mm -hmm. I need to stay quiet to be safe. These are all disempowering beliefs yeah. that are formed in our childhood. We're not even aware of them because they came up in the first 10 years of our life. And instead of being in our conscious mind, they're in our subconscious mind. And yet they rule our operating system. Mm -hmm. So when I was a little girl, I, I was playing with matches and I put myself on fire. I was oh, playing wow. with a lighter and I didn't know it for another 40 some odd years, but I had formed the belief that I wasn't safe alone. Mm -hmm. 
Mm. which actually is a great belief for a little five-year-old who puts herself on fire. Hello, I wasn't safe alone. So these beliefs are made to keep us safe and they do keep us safe when we're young. What you shouldn't do, what you shouldn't do, how you can stay out of trouble, all of these things. But as you get older, those very same beliefs just keep us small. So when I got divorced, instead of being able to look and say, okay, you know, obviously it's not what I wanted. I mean, not obviously, but for me, it was not what I wanted. Mm -hmm. I was brokenhearted. I didn't know where to go. I didn't feel safe alone, even though I was bright and I was financially secure and my kids were already in college and I could go anywhere and do anything. I was really free. Yet this little girl was so unhappy. Mm-hmm. My disempowered little child was so unhappy that she, cause she didn't feel safe that I spent many years just trying to fix that picture mm-hmm. instead of working with her belief and knowing that, that like, I didn't even know that belief was in there. It's like having an exorcism. You've got to like, you know, uncover this stuff. So once you uncover it, then you give yourself a new empowering belief that's actually in alignment mm-hmm. with the goals and where you want to go. So if you're somebody who um, believes that their voice doesn't matter or their needs don't matter, once they uncover that, they change it to like, I'm worthy of having my needs met mm-hmm. or my voice matters and I'm going to say what I need to say. And then all of a sudden following through because Mm -hmm. you now have this new empowered belief will help you get unstuck and move where you want to go. And here's the key. You're not going without fear. You're going with fear. You're taking fear by the hand and you're saying, we're going, Mm. you know, Mm -hmm. I have faith that everything is going to work out the way it's supposed to, whether I fall, if I fall, Mm -hmm. I'm going to fall forward. And if I'm successful, that's great. But either way, there's lessons and gifts. And I know that the universe is supporting me. So I feel good about taking this step. Mm -hmm. Well, we have fear. We don't have to get rid of it, but we need to conquer it, right? You have that in the title of your book. So how do we hold the hand of that fear, have it with us? Because it's always there. Yeah, we understand. But then, but still conquer it. Don't let it control us and drive. It's just, it's mind over matter. It's just basically knowing that whatever happens, growth is on the other side. Mm -hmm. And you're going to same thing, whether you fall or you don't, growth is on the other side. The way you feel about yourself when you move forward is the best part. Mm -hmm. So I also say that the juice is in the journey. Stop worrying about the end game. Have a growth mindset. Be excited about just taking the step in. Be excited about getting out of your comfort zone and moving forward. And then that builds self-confidence and Mm -hmm. self-trust and self-love yeah were you did you have fear when you were climbing Kilimanjaro no I did not have fear climbing Kilimanjaro um it wasn't fear it was something else I'm trying to think if I had fear before I went I mean I I think I had excitement I didn't really Mm -hmm. know I mean I was flying all the way to Africa I didn't, I had joined team and training for leukemia, but I didn't really know people because mm-hmm. I had trained with California, but I was living in Colorado. So I really basically trained myself with myself. And I don't think I had fear. I think I had excitement. Mm-hmm. And um, because you don't know what you don't know, right? You don't yes. know that Yes, I'm very good in altitude at at 15,000, but I don't know if I can still, will I still be good at Mm -hmm, 19,000? And and I was definitely much older than everybody else on the, um, I think there was one other person my age on the trip. Everyone else was like in their 20s and 30s. Oh, wow. So, Mm -hmm. yeah. Well, do you think, you know how we hear, Simon Sinek talks about this, Amy Cuddy, I think, talked about that, Tony Robbins, a lot about how fear and excitement are basically the same physiological expression. So Mm -hmm. our body reacts in the same way. What would you say still is the difference? Is there a difference between excitement and fear? Or is it always the same? It's actually nervousness 
and fear. So like, that's why you say I'm nerve sighted and you okay. don't say you're nervous about something because what happens is that whether you're nervous or you're, or you're um, excited. excited, it's the same hormones that are being going through your body. Yeah. So that's fine. The difference is the mindset. If you tell yourself you're nervous, you're going to be nervous. And mm -hmm. if you tell yourself you're excited, you're going to have a more positive reaction. So it's really the mind that's different. The mm -hmm. physiological hormones that are being delivered in your body are going to be the same either way. So mm -hmm. just like get nervous out of your vocabulary, if at all possible yeah. and say you're excited. And even though I say I'm excited because I do, I use that. I catch myself. I say I'm excited, but like the, the voice that's still back there is saying, yeah, but you're also a little nervous, you know, but <laughs> I, I just don't go there. Mm -hmm. In my head, actually being nervous is even good. Because mm -hmm. I, I don't know when I trade myself to think that way, but it, when you, I'm nervous, it means that something important is going to happen. It's something maybe yes. big, something really cool. So that's why I guess they already became kind of equal in my mind too. Which is but, great. Yes. But let's talk a, lot, a little bit about fear. Because I work with people who sometimes have a fear of public speaking. A lot of times we can dig deeper and find it fear of judgment or failure, fear of rejection. And you've worked with people, you coach mm -hmm. people, you help them. What kind of fear did you notice is most let's first let's say most common and then i would ask you the the hardest to work with so first one what is the most common fear that you've noticed i think that people have fear of success mm. and they have fear of failure okay. and they often have both um what if i do succeed like you said something earlier what if i succeed and I outshine my family yeah. or my partner and they no longer want me or they no longer love me. So that's one. Um, also, I have some clients that's really interesting that have been very successful. Like I have a client who, who um, created one of the biggest games, you know, mm -hmm. children's games, family mm -hmm. games. And what happens is that they have a fear of not being able to do it. Mm -hmm. It's like they have a love hate with the thing that they did because they don't want to be a one shot thing, you know? And yet they're so afraid. Like if you've never been successful on some level, you've got nothing to lose. Yeah. But if you've been successful and then you try a new venture, you're actually afraid to fail. Mm -hmm. So you're afraid of success and you're afraid of failure. It's they're very entwined and they all go back to beliefs. So if you have people that are afraid of public speaking, I would actually dig down and say, did you ever get up in front of a crowd? Like when you were a little kid and you were in school, did you ever stand up and talk and somebody laughed at you? Was there anything you can put together that happened mm -hmm. that's at the bottom of the fear. Yeah. And that's how you get rid of the fear. You make peace with the fact, oh yeah, you know what? Oh my God, I stood up when I was eight years old and I was in second grade and I said something and they all laughed at me. Well, that little child made the belief right then and there that they were stupid and that they needed to, st or they were broken and they needed to stay quiet to be safe. Yeah. So how do you be a public speaker if you've got that belief, right? <laughs> exactly. Well, I actually have a client who she knows when that happened for her. And that wasn't even childhood. It was in her corporate job. Mm -hmm. And she remembers exactly the presentation when she failed and she was kind of mocked or teased about. And ever since then, she got this fear of public speaking. And it was yeah. so, so hard for her to overcome. So like you were saying, it's so important to go back and to try to find that moment. Yeah. And sometimes it could and be a lot of times there's something earlier. Mm -hmm. Like if you can get all the way back down, she may say, Oh, wow, I forgot that that happened. And yeah, when I was in high school, this happened. And when I was in college, this happened. Because what happens is that our beliefs become self fulfilling prophecies. Mm -hmm. And they come over and over and over again because your ego wants to be right. It, it actually fights for your limitations. Mm -hmm. It doesn't fight for your success. It fights for your limitations. 
Yeah, true. Well, which fear would you say is the hardest or you've noticed maybe in your practice, it was the hardest to conquer? I have clients who are just afraid of change and they don't, I think they really just don't trust themselves. Hmm. And so it shows up in every area, you know, we're the microcosm of the macrocosm. So how you show up in one area mm-hmm. is how you show up in many areas. So it's really a, uh, I think that the clients that um, these particular clients, they have a fear of visibility. Ooh. You know, they may have been sexually abused as a child Um They may have grown up to believe that they needed to be perfect to be loved. Mm -hmm. And so they're afraid to do anything because number one, they don't want to be visible or number two, if, if the only way they're going to be loved is if they're perfect, they only want to do things when they're perfect. And so, because it's very hard to be perfect, they have a very fixed mindset versus a growth mindset. And they really are afraid to try new things mm-hmm. and trust themselves. Th- those are the hardest people. Ooh. How would you help people understand now who are listening if they don't have or have this kind of fear? How do we define or is it impossible to do without a coach to really know? <gasps> you know that's it's not, my... I mean, here's what I do. If you can figure out what you think your fear is, then you need to chunk it down to very small steps that are going to take you outside your comfort zone to try the very thing that you're afraid of. So, I mean, let's just take another thing. Let's say you want to lose 50 pounds. Well, your goal should be to lose five pounds and then another five pounds Mm -hmm. and then another five pounds. So if you've got somebody who's afraid of speaking, well, you're not going to put them out in front of a thousand people. Maybe they're going to get on a Zoom call with one other person and they're going to lead the call or they're just going to answer your questions. And then, okay, now you've done that successfully. And that was a little stepping out of your comfort zone. What's one step bigger than that? And one step bigger than that. Mm -hmm. And then, you know, there's affirmations and there's um, manifestation and all kinds of things you can do to help them concentrate on other things and not just the fear. Yeah. Yeah. And, but so we now talked about fear as being negative and something that we need to really conquer and work with, but also you're teaching that fear can be a driving force for change, right? So how can we use it then as this driving force? I personally have the mantra that if I can't, I must. Mm -hmm. So Um, I've recently built a new course that I'm waiting to see Jen connect you with Jen connect you. And we're waiting to see if LinkedIn learning picks it up. And when they first asked me to build the course, I was like, Oh, I don't know. That's like, that's bigger than I am. You know, I don't think I can do that. Mm -hmm. And then I thought, well, I have to do that. And that when I do do that, I will actually be that. Mm -hmm. So all of the fears that we think were, you know, the imposter syndrome, we're not this, we're not that, we're not big enough, we're not smart enough, we're not the da 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 da. The moment you step in, you become that. And so for me, I'm okay, like sort of what you were saying that you're okay being nervous. I'm okay knowing that something feels outside my comfort zone. Because I know that that's I'm in a growing spurt. I'm going to do this thing I'm afraid to do. And then I'm going to be that person who is that person. Yeah. And that's how you will get to that vision, that personal vision of yours, Mm -hmm. right? Yeah. Because all those fears and all those blocks, they stand in the way and all those limiting beliefs. But then eventually when we conquer, when we use, then we Mm -hmm. get to that personal vision. Well, how would you help people discover? Because I know a lot of people still don't even know. So what is that vision of mine? What would you recommend to do? Is there anything practical and simple? That oh, what's do? the, how do you figure out what your vision is what, for your future? Yes, the personal vision. Yeah, um, I do a vision circle. I do a circle life wheel with my clients. Mm-hmm. So you, you, this also, this is in my book, but um, basically you go through the different areas, um, career, finances, romance, family, friends, adventure, um, spirituality, 
couple other ones I can't even think right now, but every every aspect of your life. Mm -hmm. And then you just close your eyes and you don't try to listen from your head. You try to listen from your heart, from your soul. What does your soul want for you? So six months or a year from now, what do you want your life to look like in terms of your career? And you get quiet enough to just let some answers float up. And then you talk about it as if you already have it. Mm -hmm. I'm so excited that I got this promotion and this is what I'm doing and this is how I feel. And I am so grateful. Put gratitude and feelings in with the thing mm -hmm. and then move on to the next area of your life. And before you know it, you're going to have a whole new vision for yourself. Mm. Yeah. Well, do you ever help people create that vision and mission that is not even necessarily this year or in six months, but you know how sometimes people try to find this purpose, yeah. this, this personal vision for their whole life. Do you help them with that too? Nobody has actually come to me. People do come to me because they're lacking purpose. Mm -hmm. And I actually think believing in purpose is um, a very disempowering situation mm, for a lot of people. Mm -hmm. Because if you don't have a passionate, if you don't, if there's not something in particular that you're passionate about, mm -hmm. you actually think you're broken. You're missing something. There's something wrong with you. And that's not really true. Like I didn't start out thinking, oh, I'm going to be a personal trainer someday. And I didn't start out thinking I'm going to be a life coach someday. It's like life set itself up in such a way that I was able to, to take an opportunity and see that, oh, yeah, I think I would like to do that. Mm -hmm. And then I've been really fortunate that the things that I have done are exactly what I wanted to be doing. Mm -hmm. And so then I become passionate about it. So when I have clients that don't know their passion, they're really upset, they're broken, they don't know what they want to do. I'm like, well, what do you like to do? Let's mm -hmm. just start with what do you like to do? What makes you feel good? And then do more of that and do more of that and get involved in that and see what comes up around that. But mm -hmm. thinking that there's a passion waiting for you and until you find that passion, you can't do anything. That's a really disempowering belief. Mm -hmm. I, I'm glad that you said that because a lot of people have the fear that they live without a purpose and they still there maybe after 30, after 40, and they still haven't found it yet. And right. so they have this kind of a unworthiness in themselves, this, yes. feeling, this limiting belief. And what happened with me is I had one vision that it changed into something else and it changed into something else and right. it's evolving. And it's still like, there is always a vision because I'm a dreamer. <laughs> so I always had some kind of a dream to go after, but it changes. So would you say yeah. that that is also normal? That we yeah, because you have to step in and get to a crossroad mm -hmm. to even know that crossroad exists. Like mm -hmm. from out here, you don't even see that crossroad. So you have to get into it. And then when you're into it, you have to stay open enough to look for possibilities and look for the gifts from the universe to see what else could be coming up. What else could you be doing? Mm -hmm. So yeah, I have a lot of like 30 something women who they look on social media and everyone's married and everyone's having babies and everyone is or they're in these big careers that they're passionate about. And these girls, they feel so broken. They don't have a partner. They don't have a baby. Their clock is ticking. They're not passionate about their career. Mm -hmm. You know, they've gotten a career mm -hmm. that would make a great mother, but they don't have a partner. And so they're like, they don't even like their, their job, but they're setting themselves up for that. Mm -hmm. And that's a whole, you know, and there's so many, oh, I know so many people like that too. Yeah. Like maybe they sad. have a family, but they don't have a career. Maybe they have a career, but they don't have a family. And they always feel right. lack. They right. feel like they're not and keep comparing themselves 
to others. Right. Well, how do we, maybe some, there are moments, I just, I know I'm very aware of that in, in my own brain, if ever that happens, there could be moments when I could start comparing myself, mm -hmm. but I just stop that. What is your practical advice when we have these thoughts, when we start comparing ourselves to others on social media, or yeah. even just being with friends, you know, be, for example, for me, being single and not having children, but of course they have passion. I love what I do. Absolutely. And I'm just a super happy person, but still there are once in a while, there are moments when I'm with friends who have, who are couples who have a partner and it's just, and I have two couples of best friends who are just amazing. They have incredible relationships, just, just so lovely. And they've been together for more than 20 years. And so this is just like great example. And when I'm with them, sometimes I can't help, but right. feeling, Oh, this is just so sweet. Oh, I want, I want, this. <laughs> I want a partner. Yeah. I, I want, want this. Yeah. Someone. Yeah. So well, like, partly mm -hmm. you're comparing and people on social media you're comparing your worst day to somebody's best moment like mm -hmm. you're watching that couple in like a really great moment of theirs you're not catching them when they're yelling at each other and mad at each other and wish oh, that I they do. had a night on their own <laughs> you know what i mean yeah, yeah so i, know, I, I know. tell my my female clients that are watching all everybody on social media is that you have no idea what was going on two seconds before they snap that picture or mm -hmm. one minute after that picture, but they snapped a great moment and that's what you're seeing. And you're thinking that's what their life is like. And it's mm -hmm. not true. Mm -hmm. You're comparing your worst moment to their best moment that they've actually taken a picture of and put out for the world to see. Mm -hmm. yeah. So I do try to say that and then maybe stay off social media if that's the way it's going to make you feel because you're just really looking at everybody's best moments and you know mm -hmm. yeah and absolutely and even if for example well in my case i know these people so i know their best and their worst moments because mm -hmm. I've, I've, I've been with them for a very long time but it doesn't matter still when whenever we find ourselves looking at something and feeling that we don't we want something that we don't have. That means we are not grateful for what we do have. And so I absolutely believe also that we just need to focus on what we have, right? What would you say to that? Well, uh, yes, I would say yes to that. But I would also say that if you're jealous of something, it can also be a sign that that is something you need to be working towards. So yeah, if you yeah. want a partner or a relationship or a different job, you have to become that person. Mm -hmm. So if you want a partner, you have to become the partner you want to attract mm -hmm. so that you're going to actually mirror in the person that you do want. Mm -hmm. So sometimes being jealous of something is or giving your light away, meaning you, you are, you look at your friend and you're like, oh, I wish I was as whatever as she is. You, you have that quality because there's no quality in anybody that's not in everybody, but it may mean that you need to work on mm -hmm. strengthening that quality. Mm -hmm. And then the other thing I was going to say is that become the, the observer instead of the reactor. Mm -hmm. So if something mm -hmm. is making you think you want something or you're sad about something, get curious about it. Hmm. Why am I feeling that way? You know, what is it that I want? What do they have that I want? And then if you find it, okay, so what can I do? How do I change? What do I do? Who do I elicit to help me? Mm -hmm. What what can I do? Instead of just sitting back and wallowing in, I wish, I wish, I wish, mm -hmm. which does nothing. What can I do so yeah. I can actually bring this to fruition? Mm -hmm. That's a good, that's a very good point. Because of course, well, we are grateful for what we have, but, and we will attract more of what we're grateful for. But at the same yes. time, those negative feelings, they can be like signs. They can be little mm -hmm. voices that show us what we probably should also be yes. aware of. Yes. And maybe that's what we want to go after yeah. at some point. And yeah. yeah so it's not about voices. like making, wanting something wrong yeah. and, and not being grateful enough because yes, gratitude will bring more gratitude and it will get you looking for what's right instead of what's wrong, which is mm -hmm. huge because you get what you think about. So if you think about what's wrong, I guarantee you, you're going to find it. 
-hmm. And if you look for what's right, that's going to elicit more gratitude and positivity and gifts from the universe. So Mm -hmm. your mindset is really a big part of it. Oh, yeah, absolutely. Mm -hmm. And like, for example, someone is listening right now. And if you ever watched a great speaker and you're thinking, oh, I wish I could speak like that. Well, maybe that's a great thought. Just what Nancy just said, maybe that is a sign that you need to start working on your public speaking skills, your presentation skills. Start small. Yes. Mm -hmm. And I'm a big believer in a coach, a coach, a teacher, whatever, no matter what it is, no matter what sport I'm doing or what I'm actually doing in my life, if I can speed up the process because I'm going to hire somebody who really is an expert in what I'm trying to speed up, Mm -hmm. I go for it. I'm there. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Life coaches, business coaches, train personal Everything. trainers in every right. kind of industry. Coach yeah. is someone who can just yeah. help you do it faster. I right. mean, of course, I, book yeah. is another way, like you said, someone might not be able to afford. So a book mm-hmm. is just a longer process and we can yeah. do things by ourselves, but it will just take longer right. and we might not be able. So if you want it fast and you want it well done, then yes, find a coach. Yeah, I, I think that, um, I think... I, Obviously, finding a coach is your best way to just zone in on what you need because we all have blinders on and we only see what we see. We don't see what we don't see. Mm -hmm. Um, But the book actually is a really good first start. And then, like I read um, The Spiritual Divorce, which is the book that goes with the Healing Your Heart Coach. And when I read that book, that's when I said, oh, yeah, I want to get a coach and I want to become a coach. Mm -hmm. And so it just starts you off on the process of your own self-transformation. Absolutely. Yes. And there was, I had a similar journey, similar situation when I understood that I need a coach. It was three years ago, probably, maybe even Mm -hmm. more. And I found a business coach who then became a friend and I became her public speaking coach. And it was this beautiful relationship. But yes, coaches... I love coaches and you are a wonderful coach and you even have a gift for our audience. So Uh before I ask you my favorite question that I have, I ask everybody at the end, first, I want to make sure that people find you and they also have, you have so much, you're giving them a free chapter of your book. You're giving them a boundary checklist, a toolbox to self-love to get started (laughs) and a free quiz. We will have all the links in the description, in the show notes, that's for sure. And definitely all your socials and your website but what would you say is the very first place you would send people to i think my website does it all Mm -hmm. my website nancy picard lifecoach.com has the free chapter it has all my different certifications it has links to my book i have a new course that just came out called um, strategies and tools to living your most purposeful life. Mm -hmm. And I have a code, which is BBB success, like a better, braver success that will give any of your listeners 20% off. Mm -hmm. And I don't know if I sent you that. So um, I'll try to remember to send it to you right after this. Mm -hmm. And, Mm -hmm. and if I don't know where to send it, I'll send it to the pod match. But anyway, I'll put it in there. And that's a good thing to add. And Perfect. so, yeah, I think that the website is probably takes care of that, everything. Amazing. All of those things are on that. Yeah. Like I call, I call it my digital home. <laughs> when people exactly. come to my website, like, yes, exactly. welcome my friends to my yeah. home. Yes. And your podcast will be on there too. When, Yay. when you set it out. Yeah. <laughs> Perfect. Thank you so much. So Nancy, I would love for you to imagine that you're on a stage and the whole world is listening to you and you have 60 seconds to say something to the whole world. What would you say? I would say life is on the other side of your comfort zone. So just go there, step outside, take fear by the hand, the juices in the journey and get comfortable with being uncomfortable because it's very short term. Yeah. Thank you so much. That's beautiful. Thank you. (laughs) My dear friends, remember Nancy Picard and you can go to her website, nancypicardlifecoach.com and we will have all the links to socials and to her free gifts. She has so much for you, friends. You've got to go into into our show notes and click on all those links. And again, remember, you have an incredible message. So go out there into the world, share it and always, always speak with power.